And I'm in St. Thomas and I'm sitting at the feet of people and I'm hearing the stories and I begin to look at everything differently. How the police treated people, what happened when you went to school, what happened with health care. And in that soil, it was not long before I got the invitation coming out of Hope House one day, the Adult Learning Center, from someone from the Prison Coalition Office. Hey, Sister Helen, you want to write to somebody on death row? I said, yeah, sure, I could do that. I just want to say a little word about the sneakiness of God. Because, see, it was like 1982 when I got that invitation. We hadn't executed anyone in Louisiana in 20 years. There had been an unofficial moratorium on the death penalty that had started in the late 60s and through the 70s. The, death, the Supreme Court had put the death penalty back in 76, but nobody had been executed yet. Hey, you want to write some money on death row? I said, yeah, I could do that. I mean, I was an English major. I could write some nice letters. I never dreamed they were going to kill him, much less than I'd be there. And the way God's grace wells up under us, it, it's when we need it. It's not ahead of time. It's like a little pen line. You don't get the whole path. And it was lucky I didn't get the whole path. If there had been a searchlight and said two and a half years later, this man's going to be electrocuted to death, and you're going to be in the death house with him, and you're going to be saying to him, look at my face. I would say, are you kidding me? But we cannot anticipate grace and growth. We grow with it, and we follow the path. In Latin America, they say the path is made by walking. You step out, the grace comes on you. Step out again, grace comes out. Not ahead of time, and it's not like you got a blueprint of everything you're going to do. I talk to a lot of university students. I go, where do we start? And I say, don't anywhere is a good place to start. Start with tutoring kids. Start with going and visiting the elderly. Wherever you put your hand on that life rope, doesn't matter where you start, but get involved with people. Get involved with people who don't have what you have and who are not like you. And so the journey began for me. And at first it was letters. And you know what the problem was? He wrote back. And there was an encounter between two human beings and where there's an encounter, something happens. And then I realized from his letters he had no one to visit him. He didn't even say to me, sister, please come see me, please. He said, he, ne he was just so glad somebody had found him through letters and he had a pen pal and somebody cared about him and somebody was praying for him. But I am now meditating on Matthew 25, which I had meditated on on how many retreats, heard it, how many liturgical at readings at Mass. I was hungry, and you gave me to eat. I was in prison, and you came to me. Have you ever had an experience of scriptures you've read many times before, suddenly you read them, and they jump out of the page? Because, you know, we all our own little spin doctors with the scriptures. Oh, here they go on a story to Good Shepherd. I know how that ends. It's like cliches. We know them, how it goes. So it doesn't have any power over us. And I got it. I was in prison and he came to me. I wrote to Patrick Sonia and I said, I'll come see you sometime. I'm not changing my whole ministry. I'm continuing to work at Hope House. I just figured I could do some in runs and just go see the man in prison sometime which I did. And that's the journey of Dead Man Walking. 